Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I wanna to walk you through the five biggest lessons I've learned as a real estate investor. Over the last couple of months, we've been working on closing out two major transactions. And in that time, we've learned so many new lessons because it doesn't matter how long you've been a real estate investor, each transaction that you do, I promise you, you'll learn something new. So in an attempt to condense the last 18 years of experience into five major lessons, I'll do my best for you in hopes that you can avoid some of the same mistakes that I've made in your real estate investing journey. Before we get into it today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first lesson I've learned as a real estate investor is that cheaper is not always better. But at the same time, expensive doesn't necessarily mean better quality. And this can be applied to properties, renovations, and even our service providers. Our service providers are our realtors, our lawyers, our accountants, our insurance providers and our contractors, for instance. For example, in one of my properties in Red Deer, Alberta, I wanted to install a new sidewalk along the side of the property. And when we did that, my property manager went out and got three different quotes from three different companies. The quotes came back at $3,000, $6,000, and $9,000, all for the same scope of work. I've also heard the theory that when it comes to renovation quotes, you eliminate the low one, you eliminate the high one, and you go with something in the middle. What I did with these three quotes is I eliminated the prices altogether and I started comparing apples to apples. Did all three quotes have a similar scope of work and were they using the same kind of materials? Were the projects going to be completed in a similar timeline? And ultimately, what was the reputation of the company submitting the quote? And is there a warranty on this product if applicable? What I realized when I started to look at all those things is that the $3,000 quote that came in was actually comparable to the other two companies. So I decided to go with the least expensive option. Duh. In the end, the job was completed on time, the quality of work was very well done, and ultimately it was one third the price of some of the other quotes that I got. The second lesson I've learned as a real estate investor is that problems are unavoidable. If you've heard a real estate investing story about a bad tenant or a renovation that's gone wrong, instead of having the mindset of that won't happen to me, flip that around and say if it did happen to me, what would I do to solve the problem? Problems will arise over and over as a real estate investor and the success of your real estate investing business will depend on how you handle those problems. Whenever possible, learn from your mistakes and try to avoid making the same mistake more than once. There are a lot of mistakes in real estate investing that can be avoided through things like coaching and mentorship programs. So if you're just getting started as a real estate investor, I would highly suggest finding a real estate investing coach or mentorship program that you can be a part of so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that somebody else has already made. And here's my shameless plug for this video. If you are interested in my coaching program, there is some information in the description below, or you can always find it on my website at darrenvoros.com. I can't in good faith talk about having problems as a real estate investor and not share a personal story with you in hopes that you might be able to avoid the same mistake. So here goes. On our infill purpose-built triplex we did here in Toronto a couple years ago, we had an excavation error. To make a long story short, the architect made an error on the drawings and when the excavation was done, they went down too low and it compromised our neighboring property's footings with what's called the angle of repose. Although I think I just came up with a great name for a band if anyone's looking for one. Angle of repose, <laughs> you're welcome. Anyway, back to my story. Because it was possible that we compromised our neighbor's footings, it was important that we moved quickly and efficiently. We brought in an engineer and the engineer decided that we needed to install a small concrete wall to hold the soil back on the neighboring property. Once that small retaining wall was done, we could then continue with our foundation work and we moved quickly to get that done and everything backfilled and back to normal as quickly as we possibly could. In the end, that mistake cost us about $5,000 by the time we had the engineering reports and the small retaining wall built. But what I've learned as a real estate investor is that every problem is solvable. It's just really a matter of how much time it's gonna take and how much money it's gonna cost. But sometimes mistakes can actually benefit you in the long run. In this case, because they excavated down too far, we were able to actually build nine foot ceilings in the basement, which has really helped the overall feel of that unit and the value of the property. The third lesson that I've learned as a real estate investor is that you have to know your numbers inside and out. One of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give you as a real estate investor is keep the emotions out of it and just strictly look at the numbers. The numbers never lie when it comes to real estate investing. If you're working on a new type of transaction, 
For instance, if you've only ever flipped properties and now you're gonna get into more buy and holds or maybe into multifamily, you wanna work with somebody who's been through those transactions and get them to show you their numbers and how they calculate their returns. Because if you're used to analyzing a property in a certain way and now you're going into a new type of transaction, there can be all kinds of costs that you might not have factored in because you've never done a transaction like that before. You also wanna make sure that you build in contingency after contingency. And what I mean by that is you wanna have a buffer in all of your budgets. If you can't include the contingency in your numbers because that project isn't viable anymore, you need to walk away from that project. Along with that, one of the things that I always like to do when I'm acquiring a new property is I like to make sure that I have the means to close on that property, even if I didn't get bank financing. Now, this might not always be possible depending on your financial situation and what kind of assets you are acquiring, but whenever possible, I'm cautious not to invest my last dollars into a project in case something goes wrong and there are overages and delays and additional funds needed. An example of this was a property I was closing on a few years back and I was waiting for the bank to come in with their financing to be able to purchase the property. My mortgage broker kept telling me that the funding was coming, but I had a feeling that the banks weren't gonna be able to close on time. Closing late on a property is not always necessarily a problem, but in this case it was. I was buying this house, the sellers of that property had bought another house that was closing on the same day, and the sellers of that property had bought another house that was also closing on the same day. So if I didn't get funds to the sellers, that would have a trickle down effect of two other transactions which as you can imagine, would make things really complicated and most likely would end up in some sort of lawsuit. So about a week out from closing, I decided I was gonna go find all these funds to close in cash and then figure out my bank financing after that. So I pulled from all of my line of credits, from all my friends and family, all my credit cards to make sure that I could close on that transaction and then repay everyone when the loan came through three or four days later. Based on that transaction, I learned a valuable lesson on contingency after contingency and making sure you have enough reserve funds to be able to do all the things that could potentially come up on a project. The fourth lesson I've learned as a real estate investor is that cash flow is key. Cash flow can take many forms. A lot of investors think of cash flow simply as the monthly revenue that you bring in on a rental property. But cash flow can also be gained from flipping properties, from wholesaling properties, and from private lending. But ultimately, as an investor, you want to shore up your cash flow first before you start shifting your focus to things like building your wealth and building your net worth. If you've got enough cash flow coming in on a monthly basis or a yearly basis, that then gives you the freedom to focus on the things that you might be more passionate about. But if you don't have enough cash flow coming in, you're always gonna be chasing real estate investing and trying to keep your head above water as you try to move through. And that's never a good position to be in. And my fifth and final lesson is teamwork makes the dream work. First off, Focus on building an amazing team for you and the business that you're in. Then as you start to build your business and maybe need to hire on people, remember this slogan, hire slowly and fire quickly. One bad employee or service provider can have a huge impact on your real estate investing business. So take your time as you're hiring people and make sure that they fit your team and your business model. Personally, I like to work with people that I like. It doesn't mean we have to be best friends, but I have to wanna to interact with them on a regular basis because we do that so much when it comes to real estate investing. I like to surround myself with like-minded individuals who also have a vested interest in helping me move my business forward. Surround yourself with people who aren't afraid to ask questions and also surround Surround yourself with people who you can ask questions of when you need help. And of course, I like people on my team that have an abundance mindset. There's more than enough money out there, there's more than enough properties out there, and there's more than enough projects out there for everybody that wants to be a real estate investor. So if you can surround yourself with people who have an abundance mindset, you'll see your business move forward just that much faster and that much more efficiently. I can tell you how this relates to my business because in 2002, I bought my very first rental property. By 2007, I had three properties in my portfolio. In 2013, I actively started pursuing properties that had positive cash flow in them. And by 2019, I had 25 doors in my portfolio and my portfolio value was worth around $10 million. And so far in 2020, by building out a team with like-minded individuals that have an abundance mindset, I've added 16 doors to my portfolio and doubled my portfolio value to over $20 million. And the majority of that success has happened because I've surrounded myself with an amazing team. Whether you're just getting started as a real estate investor or whether you've been doing this for many years, make sure you take stock of the lessons that you've learned along the way because those lessons will shape you as a real estate investor as you move forward. 
Oh, and the bonus lesson that I've learned as a real estate investor is don't show up to the job site in your good clothes when the painters are on site because ultimately you'll rub up against the wall and you won't realize until halfway through a video that you've got paint on your shirt. If you guys enjoyed the video on the five biggest lessons I've learned as a real estate investor, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the the best of success on your real estate investing journey and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.